To review what you have already learned about cortisol and to expand your understanding of it, click an image. ACTH, or corticotropin, controls secretion of cortisol and promotes the growth of the inner zones of the adrenal cortex. Corticotropin-releasing hormone stimulates secretion of ACTH. Negative feedback from cortisol inhibits the secretion of both ACTH and corticotropin-releasing hormone. Despite the negative feedback system, blood levels of ACTH and cortisol vary in a circadian rhythm. This daily variability results from the changing sensitivity of the CRH secreting cells to cortisol. The circadian rhythm may allow the nervous and endocrine systems to anticipate the need for cortisol that is associated with daily activity. Stressors like pain, fear, physical trauma, infection, prolonged cold, or emotional problems elicit secretion of CRH. Other hormones associated with stress, such as vasopressin, ADH, increase cortisol levels. Remember that the steroid hormones are lipid-soluble and therefore bind to carrier proteins for transport through the circulatory system. The bound hormone exists in dynamic equilibrium with unbound or free hormone in the plasma. Only the free hormone is available to leave the bloodstream and act on target cells. Because cortisol is bound to carrier proteins, it has a relatively long half-life lasting about 90 minutes. Cortisol enters cells by diffusion. Nearly every cell in the body has receptors for the glucocorticoids. Cortisol binds to receptors in cytosol and the nucleus that alter gene expression. In addition to intracellular receptors, there are plasma membrane receptors for cortisol. Rapid inhibition of CRH by the feedback loop is mediated through these plasma membrane receptors. Cortisol is synthesized from cholesterol in adrenal cortex cells. The cells do not store cortisol. ACTH, or corticotropin, controls secretion of cortisol and promotes the growth of the inner zones of the adrenal cortex. Corticotropin-releasing hormone stimulates secretion of ACTH. Negative feedback from cortisol inhibits the secretion of both ACTH and corticotropin-releasing hormone. Despite the negative feedback system, blood levels of ACTH and cortisol vary in a circadian rhythm. This daily variability results from the changing sensitivity of the CRH secreting cells to cortisol. The circadian rhythm may allow the nervous and endocrine systems to anticipate the need for cortisol that is associated with daily activity. Stressors like pain, fear, physical trauma, infection, prolonged cold, or emotional problems elicit secretion of CRH. Other hormones associated with stress, such as vasopressin, ADH, increase cortisol levels Cortisol is important in the body's response to stress. It is key among the many hormones involved in controlling metabolic fuels. 
It ensures an adequate supply of glucose and fatty acids during times of stress when a person has not eaten. It decreases glucose use in muscle and adipose tissue and spares glucose for the brain. In the absence of cortisol, a short fast can produce dangerously low plasma glucose levels and glycogen depletion from skeletal muscle and the liver. Cortisol acts on blood vessels to enhance the effects of sympathetic vasoconstriction. In the absence of cortisol, a moderate stress can produce hypotension. Cortisol has protective effects that are not well understood. Without an adequate rise in cortisol, a person can die from a severe stress. Death usually results from the failure of the circulatory system. Cortisol inhibits inflammation and depresses the immune response. Too great an inflammatory response can harm nearby healthy tissue, and too vigorous an immune response may cause harm potentially leading to autoimmunity. Cortisol acts to temper these important body defenses. This action of cortisol is exploited by the pharmaceutical industry for the treatment of rashes, asthma, other inflammations, and autoimmune diseases. Recall that cortisol is a steroid hormone. Humans cannot break down the steroid nucleus. Its inactivation depends on altering the molecule and excreting it in the urine. One way that scientists learn about the endocrine system is to observe the symptoms of patients who secrete too much or too little of a particular hormone. Two relatively rare diseases of the adrenal gland help illustrate some of the functions of cortisol. Cushing's disease, or hypercortisolism, occurs when the body is exposed to high levels of cortisol for a prolonged period. Addison's disease, or primary adrenal insufficiency, occurs when the adrenal glands produce too little cortisol and too little aldosterone. Cushing's disease is caused by tumors of the pituitary that secrete increased amounts of ACTH. It is the most common cause of hypercortisolism. Hypercortisolism, from all other causes, such as glucocorticoid drugs, is called Cushing's syndrome. The glucocorticoid prednisone may be prescribed for asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, other inflammatory diseases, or for immunosuppression following an organ transplant. Addison's disease is caused by damage to the adrenal cortex, inducing hyposecretion of both cortisol and aldosterone. Hyposecretion of cortisol from other causes, such as pituitary damage and subsequent lack of ACTH, produces similar symptoms. In this case, aldosterone secretion is normal. Cushing's patients experience paradoxical accumulation of fat that produces a round moon face and a buffalo hump on the back. A cardinal symptom of Addison's disease is a change in skin pigmentation that produces a bronzed color. Based on what you have learned about cortisol, answer the following questions. Click on the patient who will have the symptoms described. You must get the correct answer to proceed. Which patient has hypoglycemia? One function of cortisol is to promote production and release of glucose. Lack of cortisol results in low plasma glucose. Which patient may exhibit signs of steroid diabetes? Hyperglycemia in Cushing's patients can lead to diabetes mellitus. The chronic increase in insulin levels induced by hyperglycemia can cause pancreatic beta cells to fail. These high levels of insulin might also explain the redistribution of body fat. The action of insulin on normal body fat stores is antagonized by cortisol. In other body areas, like the face and upper back, insulin can promote lipogenesis. Which patient might get dizzy or faint due to low blood pressure? 
Cortisol promotes vasoconstriction. Insufficient amounts of cortisol can lead to dangerous low blood pressure. Both patients may feel fatigued and have muscle weakness, but which one will have increased nitrogen breakdown products in the blood and spindly arms and legs due to muscle loss? Cortisol promotes protein breakdown to supply amino acids to the liver where they are used to produce glucose. Loss of protein also accounts for the easy bruising and poor wound healing seen in Cushing's patients. Which patient may be at risk for overwhelming infections? Cortisol inhibits the inflammatory response and depresses the immune system. The risk of infection rises in patients who are taking prednisone and those with hypersecretion of cortisol. Which patient may show decreased plasma levels of sodium and dehydration and therefore crave salty food? Loss of aldosterone accompanies the loss of cortisol in Addison's disease. Aldosterone acts to retain salt and water. Note that the loss of aldosterone contributes to the low blood pressure in Addison's patients. Both of these pathologies can be treated. Cushing's disease is treated by surgical removal of the tumor. When Cushing's syndrome is caused by therapeutic drugs such as prednisone, treatment involves adjusting the dosage of the drug. Addison's disease is treated by replacement of cortisol and aldosterone. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is treated by replacement of cortisol.